live. You're watching Fox 44 News at 5.30, your local news leader. You have to go home now. We have to have peace. We have to have law and order. Everybody stay down. Get down. A historic and chaotic day continues in our nation's capital. What started as a protest against certifying the Electoral College votes in support of President-elect Joe Biden turned into mass numbers of people storming into Congress, some of them armed. According to the latest reports tonight, one woman was shot and just died from her injuries. Inside the Capitol show people clashing with Capitol Hill police. That building now under lockdown. The entire D.C. National Guard also mobilized to help federal officers. Our nation's capital is under a mandatory curfew until 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Let's turn now to our Fred Childers in studio who talked with U.S. Senator Bill Cassidy who witnessed today's events. Fred. Yeah, Kelly, and he had lots to say. Senator Cassidy denounced the chaos he witnessed today, saying it was a disruption of our democracy. Now, I spoke with him on the phone as he and his staff were taking shelter in his Capitol office. Here's part of that conversation just moments after the breach. Were you on the, the floor when the, the protesters breached? Yes, I was although they did not come into the Senate chamber. But they did notify us that they had, protesters had um, entered, into, entered into the Capitol. And by the way, Fred, if by any chance somebody is watching this who's part of that protest, um, the peaceful protesters should go home because the violent ones are not to be tolerated, and the peaceful protest is being contaminated with the violence. Senator Cassidy appearing to be very upset there. Now for more on today's events, we'll head over to political reporter Harrison Golden. Harrison. Fred, these images behind me are why the Capitol has been under lockdown for hours, why that curfew just began moments ago, and it's why the D.C. National Guard has been called to the Capitol building with some help from Virginia's National Guard. And it's why so many of us are watching tonight. Many reactions here, but first to President Trump's message to those storming the House and Senate chambers today in his name. We have to have peace. So go home. We love you. You're very special. You've seen what happens. You see the way others are treated that are so bad and so evil. I know how you feel. But go home and go home in peace. What we're seeing are a small number of extremists dedicated to lawlessness. This is not dissent. It's disorder. It's chaos, it borders on sedition, and it must end now. And he heard, of course, from Senator Bill Cassidy just moments ago. We'll have other reactions from Louisiana's elected officials a little bit later in the broadcast. Kellyanne. All right, Harrison, thank you. And tonight, the Associated Press calling the Senate runoffs in Georgia with both seats going to Democrats. Democrats will now control the House, the Senate, and White House after Democrats John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock defeated Republican incumbents Senators David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler. Happening inside our state capitol building today in Baton Rouge, Governor John Bell Edwards turned his focus to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic as Louisiana marked a new high of hospitalizations earlier today. Fox 44's Jonah Gilmore was at today's briefing and joins us live outside the capitol building with the very latest. Jonah. Yeah, good evening, Chad. Very strong words from Governor John Bell Edwards tonight. The governor getting very passionate, saying we must do something to end COVID-19 in our state, saying we can't wait. Now, those strong words come on the heels of the hospitalization spike we have seen in the state, the highest since the pandemic started. This is something the governor has been warning against and fearing could happen. All of this happening as vaccines are being distributed around the state. But we learned today pharmacies that received the vaccine this week may not get more during the next distribution. The governor has been preaching to take precautionary measures, and he says it seems his words aren't getting through to people. If my command of the English language is not good enough to communicate that sufficiently, I apologize. We are not going to enforce our way out of this, people. We're either going to do the right thing or we're not. And if we don't do better, we're going to watch a lot more of our fellow Louisiana brothers and sisters die. 
Now, the governor says there's no word on tighter restrictions. He says that will come as early as next week when his order is set to expire. Reporting live from the Capitol tonight, Jonah Gilmore, Fox 44 News. All right, Jenna, thank you. Louisiana hospitals are on high alert tonight as well. Our Dan Geller explains why doctors now fear a lack of available beds to treat all patients. Right now, Louisiana has its highest number of new COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations since this pandemic started last March. Tonight, hospital systems are worried about having enough beds in what they are expecting to be a rough two-month period. This is as bad as it's been from a volume standpoint. That reality check from Louisiana's hospitals. Doctors from Our Lady of the Lake giving an update Wednesday on its COVID patient numbers. Oshner staff feeling the same pinch. We are preparing to uh, put more beds into service and looking at opportunities to move patients, you know, should this continue to escalate. Wednesday, the Louisiana Department of Health reported more than 6,800 new COVID-19 cases, along with more than 1,900 hospitalizations. Both are the highest since the pandemic started. Health experts say the current numbers are impacted by holiday parties, and we haven't seen the effects from Christmas and New Year's Eve. It's private parties. It's folks that are, um, you know, having folks over to their house, and then they take the mask off and you know, one person has COVID and then boom, you've got a spread at, at a party. Now, Oshner is asking doctors not to schedule non-emergency surgeries that require an overnight stay. Doctors say this third surge of the virus is putting a squeeze on an already crippled system. What concerns me the most about this surge is when you look at that 2000 number that we're about to hit, those patients are spread throughout the state of Louisiana. But what is not spread throughout the state of Louisiana are ICU beds and ICU doctors, respiratory therapists, critically ill care is not spread evenly throughout the state. Doctors stress once again that the guidance of wearing masks and having social distancing are the only ways we will be able to reverse this trend. In Baton Rouge, Dion Guillory, now back to you. After the break, we've got more coverage of the chaotic events in our nation's capital. But first, let's get a quick check of the roads and forecast with Jesse Gunkel. Yeah, right now, again, we're kind of looking at the big situation. There was an accident. You can kind of see it here. This is the on-ramp of LA-1. A lot of that traffic is backed up for quite a few miles. It's starting to approach Brulee and Addis. Obviously, 110 or 10, it's slow to 110 going across the Mississippi River Bridge, all in that eastbound lane. And it really doesn't open up until past the lakes at this point. Now, again, expect to hit some more delays as soon as you head towards the mall. As soon as you pass Essen, you're going to have to hit the brakes heading out towards Ascension. Also, Livingston, again, heading out that direction. It's a very very slow at this hour. Make sure you buckle up and drive safely tonight. This traffic has been sponsored by Pate Murphy at the Murphy Law Firm. Well, here's the very latest. Obviously, we are tracking a band of showers and thunderstorms right now. A severe thunderstorm watch in place for Houston. Luckily, it looks like the band's going to weaken slightly, not completely, as it heads to our area. But there still is that potential for a 